typically it's February where I do love dating and sex segments or series on my girlfriend doctor show. But you know, right here in the middle of summer, we are going to talk about dating. So, and keeping relationships interesting, intimate, connected. And if you've been in a marriage for a long time, how you go from being roommates to boyfriend, girlfriend again, and how that feels, but specifically dating over 50. Okay. Listen, I'm no we, if you're under 50 or well over 50, I know I'm going to have some great tips to share with you too. So last year, I introduced Bella Gandhi to you and my girlfriend doctor community. We did a girlfriend doctor show with her and Nancy Hala, and we talked about dating. And I didn't tell you that I then hired her to be my dating coach. And she walked me through red flags of dating errors and um, how to really kind of be patient when you're dating. And it's just been so fun. So looking at it, I would say I've been practicing dating now for a year. And um, I'm going to bring Bella back on and let's hear what she has to say. Any updates, anything post-COVID, what does the even menopausal woman contend with differently in dating? And I'm going to answer some questions that have come in about dating. So stay tuned and let me introduce you to Bella Gandhi. She really is amazing. She's uh, been a friend now since I first met her. And she's featured all over the media and the news. You'll see her on Good Morning America, on, um, gosh, so many shows. And she's all over Instagram and has so many great pieces of advice and information that she's constantly sharing. So let, without further ado, as the saying goes, let me introduce you to Bella Gandhi. Well, welcome, Bella, back to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. It's good to see you. <laughs> oh, it's amazing to be here. I'm like counting the minutes until we got on this. So thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. I tell, I tell our audience that before, before Bella got on, she's drilling me. How's your dating going? What's been going on? What are the situations? What's happening? And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm following. Let's talk about the rules of dating that Bella has um, uh, come up with the best dating practices and what's different for women, those of us over 50 that are dating now. And now we're in the summer because I would say my love, sex and dating series is in around Valentine's Day is, is February. And so we're going to follow up in the summer. We need some, we need some advice here. Yeah. So dating over 50 is the best time to date. Ladies, remember for so most people, you know, marriage, kids, all of that, people are kind of settled with it. Whether you've had it, you're fine, you don't need it anymore, you haven't had it, you're okay with it. But what most women are looking for at this time in their life is a great companion. I like to say the lid to your cute little pot, but I'll tell you, there's 35 million singles over the age of 50 in this country. And we work with a lot of them. And I will tell you, it's a really active, fun time to date right now at this age. So if you're debating it, if you think it's not for you, if you think it's not going to work for you, I promise you, you're going to have fun. You've just got to put a toe in. Yeah. You know, and this comes up to like the whole concept of, you know, what happened to the primary relationship for many of us, like myself, divorced with kids, raising kids on my own as a single mom, all the, those challenges that have come up in my own life. But like, you know, like we don't want to repeat the mistakes that we made. And if we can reignite a marriage, of course, we want to do that. But so, so this is after the fact in the case that we're single and divorced post 50, but we don't want to repeat. I remember someone saying to me one time and he was on his third marriage and he goes, you know, uh, sometimes it's a different face on the same problems. So oh, you yeah. have to address those. And so how do you work in your coaching to navigate those so that you have that lifetime relationship if that's what someone wants? Yeah, I think it really comes into doing some introspection, which we do with every client. Like we do a deep dive into everybody's relationship past, right? We have this framework of documents that people fill out 
not only to help me and my team understand where I call it your picker, where your picker's off. Why are you picking the wrong people? Some of it has to do with family of origin stuff, right? Look, at the end of the day, our families, we're at nature plus nurture, right? It can have a profound impact on what we see with our parents and how they treat us, how we choose romantic partners going forward. So like you said, I say same dude, different face, decade over decade. Attachment stuff can play a role. Or maybe you came from perfectly sane, normal parents. Most of us probably didn't. But let's say you're that outlier and you did and you're like, nope, they were great. They're happily married. And But even, you know, some of us just have those bad pickers. Some of us started that in high school and college and we started really liking the bad boy, the edgy guy, the one that was like love bombing us. And we never quite got out of that. So our pickers can be broken for a variety of reasons. And think about, Anna, you know, the messaging that we get through social media, through Hollywood, right? It should be love at first sight, butterflies in your stomach, three-day rule, you know, go sleep with people. And all of a sudden then we wonder, why am I in this pickle all over again? Because sometimes biology points us in the wrong direction. Culture does, social media does, attachment stuff. It's like, if your picker is broken and this is resonating with you, I want to tell you something. It's not your fault. <laughs> well, you said so much in that, right? Uh, butterflies, I know, is one of your red flags. So I'm going to have you hit on that. But also like holding off on sex and intimacy, sexual intimacy, because that increases oxytocin. Then you're attached and you're like, what am I doing? You start making rationalizations for the relationship you're in. I'd love for you to give me some case examples of the butterflies and the, um, the attachment, the early attachment issues and what happens when we, we you know, avoid those actual red flags. Right. So we talked about attachment, right? And so a lot of times when you've seen a lot of dysfunction at home or maybe in your early relationships and dysfunction, meaning those relationships might've ended in dumpster fires, right? And, but the entire time you've been anxious. Maybe you grew up in a house full of anxiety. You were walking on eggshells. You didn't know what your dad or your mom was going to do and how they were going to react to you. And you've been in a series of relationships like that. So often what we don't realize is we're looking to be activated. We're looking to be put into a state of anxiety again. Now enter the dude, let's say, that comes in and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I have all these butterflies in my stomach. This is so great. I must really like him. This is exciting. Ladies, this is your attachment system turning into anxiety. It, we think it's excitement, but it's fear. Your gut is telling you, you've dated this dude before. Danger, Will <laughs> Robinson. So when you're getting those big butterflies after the first date, I'm not talking about like the little nervous butterflies that you get before. Maybe you go on a stage like you do, Anna, and you speak to groups of people, or maybe you do a show. And oh, that's you, you know, nausea that I get. Yeah, that's Complete yeah, nausea. Exactly. <laughs> that's full on panic attack and nausea. So, so, but the, these are like that, like your stomach's flipping over. That's your first sign that butterflies are bad in the dating process. Okay. That's what I say. Every dude that I dated that gave me butterflies ended up breaking my heart once, twice, or five times mm -hmm. until I started to go, wait a second, this whole butterflies thing, what's the common denominator? It's me and what's happening. And when I started to look at the research and what it showed and looked at my clients, I started my company 13 years ago. Anecdotally, I can tell you with great certainty that people that give you butterflies typically aren't going to potentially be the best mates for you. There's always the exception to the rule. Okay. So don't tell me about the one out of right. 999 right. Awesome for that person. Great. Glad he gave you butterflies and you're happily married for 7,500 years. Amazing. However, for the vast majority of us, it's not going to work. It's the butterflies that are saying, okay, warning. I like warning. That. It's anxiety. Yeah. It's anxiety. Just hanging out with your best friends and your granddaughter and your daughters. Do you feel butterflies in your stomach? No, it's pure no. joy. Yeah. It's joy and safety and ease. That's what you're looking for. Oh, I love that. Joy, safety, and ease. And I like how you said the common denominator is me and those equations, right? And right? that's very true. It's over and over, different face, same problem, but who's the common denominator? And um, 
And one thing too, it's they talked about, that was one of the first books you had me read when I started working with you, Bella, was the attachment, I forget what it was called, but attachment types. And so there was anxiety, avoidance, and maybe healthy. Yeah, there's four of them. You've got them, anxious, avoidant, then there's anxious avoidant, and secure, right? And most people are striving to head towards the secure quadrant. So, so, but you know, the worst pairings can be between anxious people and avoidant people. And what's particularly sinister about attachment is you're not fixed anxious and you're not fixed avoidant. They can morph, mm. right? They shape shift date based upon who you're with. So a lot of times if you have picker issues and attachment issues, good normal, secure people might seem boring. Ah, so that's important to be aware. Okay. Did they feel boring because they're that safe? Um, I know when I activating you, they're not activating your anxiety. And when you're used to being activated, if you grew up in a household where there was dysfunction between parents and you or siblings, you're always in that state of you don't know what you're going to walk into. And when you're a baby, a toddler, a child, a teenager, and you grow up in that state, that's what feels normal. That's mm -hmm. not normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then of course it goes to codependency and having healthy boundaries and all those issues. So how do you work? Like, how do you work through that? I will tell you what mine was. I was avoidant secure. I was kind of like even on those, but that avoidant secure and that, that definitely, that definitely resonated truth when I took that quiz. Yeah, it's really, and there's a lot to it. Like a lot of people know what their attachment style is maybe, or they want it to be, but the real rubber hits the road as you're dating. And I mean, one of the things that we do, as you know, when we work together and we work with thousands of people, it's putting those guardrails around each person to say, I think those are red flags of avoidance. I think you're becoming the avoidant. And I do want you to go out on another date with this person. And this is how we help to steer and steady that ship towards Love Island versus steering it towards the glacier. And we all know how that ends up. Ah, now give me some examples of a couple that are a uh, person you've worked with. So, you know, I can tell you people expect romance and chemistry and to be swept off their feet forever. I have a client named Anne that I worked with. And she said, you know, date one, I said, the goal of the first date is to get to the second date if there's no red flags. And I said, Anne, what's the goal of the second date? She's like, to get to the third date if there's no red flags. And he hits all of my high GHQ characteristics. That's something we do to really help each individual client understand the kind of partner that's okay. going to make them happy. Okay, GHQ, to define that, good husband qualities. Amen, sister. Good so husband qualities. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so... And so Anne knew what her GHQs were. She knew what the red flags were. So I, she called me. She says, listen, Bella, I'm going on a fifth date with this guy. And she was Catholic. And she said, I think he's too Catholic even for me. So we started calling him the Pope. So she went out. And she said, I didn't even want to bother you with the fourth date because I knew you were going to make me go out on the fifth date. But I'm going on a fifth date with the Pope. I'm like, great. So she gets to the date with the Pope. And the Pope says to her, listen, um, I'm sorry in advance. Like we've got a work situation coming up and my phone might ring and I'm going to have to take it. And I apologize in advance because it's probably going to happen. Sure enough, 20 minutes into the date, phone rings, bring, bring. He picks up the phone and suddenly the Pope turns into this directive, commanding, amazing leader on the phone. And I said to Anne, so what'd you think? And she says, I think I like the Pope. Now, <laughs> she would have thrown the Pope back to the pond, date one or date two, but for she knew what her GHQs were, she knew what the red flags were, and she knew that I would tell her chemistry can come later in the game. It doesn't have to be there right away. In fact, ladies, if you feel chemistry with somebody right, right, right away, most likely it's because this person reminds you of an ex reminds you of someone that wasn't maybe good for you 
So let that chemistry grow just because it's not there right away. Hell, when we open up a good bottle of wine, we don't chug it. We let it breathe. Let your dates and your relationships breathe like Give a good bottle of wine. Yeah. No rush, right? Like no stop rush. rushing. No oh, rush. We're trying to look, you know, a year, 10 years ahead. So the red flags, will you go through some of those red flags or give an example of someone who was surprised by some red flags? Yeah. I love these stories, Bella. Don't you all love dating stories? I mean, can think about it, can think about your dating days or maybe you're in the dating uh, time of your phase of your life like I am. And um, you've got some stories. I have got some stories. But uh, Oh, yeah, right? And everybody's got stories. But remember, mm -hmm. dating is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yep. And you have to collect those stories, right? Because one day you're going to go on your last first date, I promise you. And then you'll have all of these things along the way because it's ultimately it's the journey to finding love that we'll always remember. So back to your question on red flags anybody who gives you butterflies okay we what we beat that dead butterfly over the head already but anybody that seems too good to be true somebody that maybe you're coming out of divorce you know you felt frumpy your ex never told you you were attractive maybe they told you you're ugly and you're never going to find someone else and you're fat and all the things these narcissistic people can tell us which is so deleterious on our self-esteem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, red flags are anybody who is critical of you or more importantly, love bombs you. So mm -hmm. let's say in the beginning, a love bomber might be like, your ex was crazy. You are the most beautiful, luscious, juicy, amazing, gorgeous, sexy thing I have ever seen in my life. And because your cup is so empty, they're like overflowing the wine into your cup. And you're like, this is amazing. Oh my God. I can't wait to take you to my house in Cabo. We're going to spend Christmas together. We're going to do this. We're going to go have dinner at the top of the Eiffel tower. And suddenly you're like spun around word around. If anybody is too fast and furious and telling you like just way too many things that your gut says, this kind of feels like I'm being smothered with compliments chances are you're being love bombed. That's a big red flag, especially if you're coming out of something where your self-esteem has been beaten down and you feel thirsty for that kind of love and those kinds of compliments. It's time to work on yourself and surround yourself with good friends and family and people that are going to make you feel good about yourself and start to do that. But you don't need someone else to overflow your cup and then pull the rug out from under your feet. Mm, that's a big one. So, and I, I just heard someone recently was in that situation and she was love bombed and she was crazy about him and it was all good. And then all of a sudden he disappeared, didn't stop calling. And she's like, I don't get it. Like one moment I hang the moon for him and the other moment he's gone. I'm annoying. I'm, and this happened to me in an early relationship for the first four months, I was amazing. The coolest girlfriend. And the next day, literally after the four month mark, I was annoying. I was needy. I'm like, wait, what happened? I'm the same as I was a week and two weeks before. And then as I got more educated on this, I realized that when somebody is emotionally avoidant, right? At a certain point when the oxytocin, the testosterone, the, do the dopamine, the high levels of hormones that make you feel excited with all the newness, as soon as those start to wane, if somebody isn't a good attachment vet, isn't a good secure person, they're going to start to pull away from you and they're going to start to pick you apart. Whereas it's not about you, it's about them and their avoidance. They can't connect. So they're going to pick you. I don't like the way you eat your peas right? It's like, wait, it's like Seinfeld all of a sudden. <laughs> That's a really good example. That's so funny. And so then what do you do in that situation? You notice this, you're aware of it. If you detect that somebody is pulling away from you, have the conversation, right? And don't think that there's something, if they say, oh, I was upset with you because of blah, blah, blah. And if it's fixable, that's great. But if you see a change in that person's behavior and they're pulling away and they're like, it's not me, it's you. Why are you so needy? 
it might be time to have a conversation and not be in that relationship anymore. And if you need help around these things, do that. Get a therapist, get a coach, call me, somebody that's going to be objective with you and tell you what you need to hear versus taking advice from well-intentioned family and friends that love you, but their primary goal is they don't want to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they want to see you happy and they, you know, yeah, for sure. Or together or something settled. That might be a thing too. Now, you know, it's true, like with that whole concept of the narcissistic relationship, right? That, you know, understanding what are those red flags of narcissism? Is that, are those the same, the love bombing? Yeah, narcissists, I mean, you can start to tell like the nar signs of narcissism, you know, as defined in the DSM-5 that therapists use to actually diagnose full-blown narcissist. I mean, a hallmark of a true narcissist is a complete lack of empathy, right? If a narcissist can't put themselves in somebody else's shoes, they can't put themselves in your shoes. They're always the victim. They're always the wronged one. That's a big sign that something is wrong. When somebody plays the victim all the time, my ex sucked. This is what happened. My friends leave me out all the time. My kids are turned against me. It's like, huh, again, what's the common denominator in all those dumpster fires? If it's the person, it might be a red flag. Oh yeah. That's, you can definitely hear that in, in situations and dates. So, so um, advice for the 50-year-old going into dating now or after divorce or, you know, maybe she hasn't been married. Oh my gosh, who got married recently? That was the first time in her life and just to like a soulmate connection, love of her life. They, she knew him for over eight years or more and he just patiently waited for her. Lisa Nichols, the famous Lisa Nichols, the Lisa Nichols of the secret, the motivating the masses. And she just had this blowout wedding in the Bahamas, moved there and um, is just as happy as can be. Wow, that's beautiful. That's such a good story. So for women over 50, get some help around this. Don't feel like you have to do this alone. You know, you can find support groups. Like I'm saying, dating can bring up the most vulnerable part of our lives mm. and it can, it can bring up so many fears that we haven't dealt with and anxiety. Find, find a group, find a person, find someone that what I tell my clients is we're going to wrap you up in bubble wrap that's pink and sparkly. So we don't let you get hurt during the process, right? You want to do something that's good for you. That kind of takes the butterflies out of your own stomach to do this and get some great photos for online dating, try the apps and do things in a safe way. You don't want to wham, bam, thank you, ma'am into seven dates and seven days and then say, oh my gosh, this sucks. You want to put boundaries around it, just like you would if you were embarking on a new health regime. You would work out for maybe 30 to 60 minutes, five times a week. You would change your eating habits. You would read menu pause. You would buy the, you would do all the things Dr. Anna has been telling us all to do, but you would do things in chunks and you would incorporate these changes into your life. Look at your dating life very much in the same way. Take one step and the next step, and then the next step. Oh, yeah. It is a process. Like you said, it's a marathon and not a sprint. So what is something um, you don't get asked, but you wish you, know, you wish you would be around dating? What is something that comes up at your, you know, it's like, it's not a common question. I'm trying to think of stuff. It's like, you know, here I am, you know, in like in looking at my own life, dating some great guys and, you know, but really there's, there's an ebb and a flow to it, right? There's time constraints. I've moved, you know, three generation household, all this good juicy stuff in my life. And so the priorities wane too, right? And so then it's always, you know, hold off on the sex. That's a biggie. That's really important. Like be patient. Um, and to get, take your time, get to know, to get to know someone and don't let, let boring be a sign of, Hmm, maybe I'm being avoidant. Yeah. And yeah, like, I feel like there's, gosh, if you make it sound so simple, I'm like, is it really that simple? I mean, 
you know, gosh, it doesn't feel that simple. It, it takes a long time, right? Just because something is simple, it doesn't mean it's easy. Right. And, and like, how do you lose weight? People say, well, I have to eat differently and move more, but is that easy? It's not easy, right? And so, well, it's easy to comprehend what you need to do, but it's not something that's easy to incorporate in our lives. And nothing big that you'll ever do in your life is easy or should be easy. And I think when we think, well, it should be easy, right? Most frustration in life is about mismatched expectations. So if you expect this is going to take you time and you're going to kiss some frogs along the way, then it makes it easier because it's the people that have that Amazon Prime mentality. Like, well, I put some photos up and I got some good photos taken and I want Mr. Wright to be delivered via drone to my inbox, Amazon Prime. Well, that's where it gets frustrating. So I would tell you with regards to what I wish people would ask is how long is this going to take me? It could take you three months. It could take you three years. It depends on the work that you're ready to do on yourself, the work you're ready to put in the process. And to some extent, when the universe says it's your time. Yeah. And you know, one of those things, the work you're ready to do on yourself so that you magnetize your mate towards you, right? Versus this, you know, this like high effort rather than creating a magnetic personality where you are the person your loved one wants in his life. Exactly. Be the person that's you want a to piece. attract. Be the person that you want to attract is attracted to. Yeah. Right? 100%, right? And, if and so those qualities, those qualities are healthy, positive mindset, encouraging, kind, caring, gets to know, care about their love languages and, and what else, you know what I mean? Exactly. The relationship feels easy, right? And dating isn't easy, but if you also change your mindset around dating, so many people say, "Ugh, I have to date. I have to get on the apps. Instead, if you look at it as a privilege in a lot of countries, we're not allowed to date. And a lot of cultures, we're not allowed to date. And instead, if you say, I'm really lucky, I get to date and I get to meet this new person and I get to hear their story and I get to potentially make a new friend, you take the pressure off of the date. If you just say, oh my gosh, I get to date. I, I had a client that had a lot of anxiety around going on dates. And so what we, and she actually was in Texas. So the little mind hack that we gave her is pretend every time you go out on a date that you're going to meet your best friend's new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. She was like, oh, I like that. I said, because if you think about it, it's your best friend and it's her new boyfriend. So for you, he's off limits, but he's someone you really want to connect with. And he thinks the world of you because he's your best friend's partner. And when you walk in feeling accepted already, right? And wanting to connect with this person, that's the secret to a great date right there. Oh my gosh. See, that is very clear. And that is really, really nice. And I tell you, Belly, because you know, you're my dating coach that, um, you know, the, and prior to book launch, book launch, there was no dating going on very little, of course. but in, um, but I've met some amazing people with this attitude, you know, it's like some people I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have initially maybe chosen to go out with. And I've just met some great people that I stayed in contact with that became friends that maybe not a, a right fit for long term, but who knows what time will tell still. But yet, you know, it's just that open minded, I'm here to make a friend. And mm -hmm. let's see how we connect. How do we relate to each other and kind of looking at I always say I'm practicing, still practicing. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's it. Like, these people, they're auditioning to be the lid to your pot, you're practicing. And just the more fun you can be, the more fun you'll have. We think someone else is going to make us have fun. That's not true. We are the fun. Bring the fun. Bring interesting questions to the date. Plan an interesting activity. Do something that you like. Make it fun. Life is too short to suffer through all this boring stuff. Ooh, which brings a good question, right? Is like how much do does the like the male female roles like do we we wait for him to call us back 
we wait, you know, how does, how do you navigate being successful professional woman and dating, you know, where I'm going here? Yeah, I don't, I don't ascribe to this whole masculine, feminine, I think is successful, badass women, right? We got to this point, not by sitting on the sidelines and waiting for somebody to come and pick us, right? We got up, we pulled ourselves up by the bootstraps. And in the dating world, if you go out on a great date with somebody, let's say, and let's say you go out on a date with Mike and you thought it was a great date. And now it's three days later, you haven't heard from Mike. Guess what you can do? Send a nudge text. Hey, Mike, I just drove by the wine bar that we were at and it made me think of how much fun meeting you was. I hope you're having a great week. Because now you've just nudged Mike to say, oh, hey, you put yourself back on the radar because what often happens is guys are more nervous than we are about rejection. They're expected to make the first move all the time. They hear no 10 times more than we do. And so sometimes they're like, oh God, maybe she didn't like me. I just can't hear another no. And they don't reach out to you. But the minute you send that nudge text, if they were into you, you will hear from them. I have a client in Chicago named Allison who went out on a date. She was very shy and socially anxious. And she went out on her first coffee date on a Sunday with a guy named Eric, who was more quiet, more introverted, and more anxious than she was. And she said, but I think the date went well. I said, okay, Monday rolls by, no text from Eric. Tuesday rolls by, no text from Eric. Wednesday, she's literally in tears, text me, and I didn't know about Monday. And Tuesday, I was like, oh my God, send him a nudge text, Allison. She sent him a nudge text. Five minutes later, her phone rang. It was Eric on the phone saying, it was so good to hear from you. Are you free on Saturday? They are married now. Oh, that's a beautiful he story. thought she didn't like him. Why? Because he had his own crap. And mm -hmm. he was like, oh, I didn't know she liked me. And meanwhile, she was like, what a sweet, kind gentleman. But because he didn't feel great about himself and he had heard the nose. He automatically came into a, well, I don't know if she really liked me. And she sent him that text and the rest was history. Oh, I love that story. That is so good. And that is so true too, right? We're not waiting on the sidelines. Don't wait. You know, on the it's sidelines. being a participant. I think that's really good. Think of your dating life as a car. Do you want to sit in the passenger side and be driven around all the time? Hell no. You want to take the steering wheel and you want to go where you want to go. You want to pick someone who's high GHQ. You want to pick someone that has no red flags. You want to pick someone that makes you feel at ease and safe and loved and adored. Those choices are all in your hands. Oh my gosh. Okay. Then another question. What about paying on a date? Like how do you navigate paying, sharing a bill, offering? So I always say offer to split it. Say, Hey, can I help with that? And mean it, right? Because men, again, they're looking for what kind of a partner would you be? Right. And so if a guy lets you share the bill, that's fine. And they're taking mental note of that. If you don't offer and you sit there like a princess, right, waiting to be taken care of, they're kind of like, wow, she didn't even offer, right? Imagine, would you do that if you went out with a friend? Just sit there when the bill came? Of course not. Treat the dates just like you would a meeting with a friend. They will go better. And if the guy says, no, 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 I got that. Don't be, don't argue with it. Just say, are you sure? That's so kind. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's definitely, um, that's good advice. Awesome. Thank you, Bella. I've got now hot, some rapid fire questions for you. Great. Part of my Girlfriend Doctor show. Our Girlfriend Doctor platform is on four pillars. Nourish, shine, awaken, and embrace. So the first nourish question is, what is your favorite food? Well, I subscribe to Menu Pause and Dr. Anna, and Dr. Anna got me to wear this CGM. I'm showing you guys this. Oh, she you. actually FaceTimed me and taught me how to do this. So my favorite foods are good, 
healthy green foods skewing towards keto. So um, I love myself. Anything that makes me feel really good, I've gotten more into good healthy seafoods because of you, good healthy greens because of you, and good healthy fats. Ah, oh, well, that makes me very proud. Thank you. So, um, okay, now shine. What your skin is beautiful, Bella. What is your skincare routine or what's a product that you just love? Oh, gosh, I love my tinted moisturizer. So I don't wear heavy foundations unless I'm doing something on TV and then they usually slap on the spackle. But other than that, I love a good CC tinted moisturizer with an SPF 50 in there. It's like all in one. It goes on like a dream. It's light and you get sun protection. So as women, you know, at any age over 30, you want that sun protection wherever you go and just a little bit of color correction. So it just gives you a little bit of glow. That's great. Okay. And so awaken. My mom would always say that your edu your travel is one of your best forms of education. So what's on your destination diary? So we're planning to go to Montreal and Tremblant with our kids in a couple of weeks and doing a couple of days in old Montreal and then going to do some hiking and biking in Mont Tremblant, which is just a beautiful ski village an hour and a half north of Montreal. Oh, that sounds wonderful. It's jazz season too in Montreal. Will you be there for the jazz festival? I think we're going to be a little bit early because I've got one that I need to take to college August 15th. Oh, wow. How exciting. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now the last one is embrace. It's about intimacy. So I'm going to ask you two questions because this is kind of your game space. And the first is, um, what has been the glue to the intimacy in your relationship with your husband? Being best friends, mm. being best friends. We just celebrated our 25 year wedding anniversary this year. And he gave me the most beautiful gift, which was the 25, he typed it. And it was 25 things I've learned from having an amazing partner in 25 years. And the first thing was, marry your best friend. Oh, I love that, Bella. That is so good. Okay. That is, that is words to end on. I would if I was a tasteful host, but instead I'm going to ask you my most risque questions. What is your favorite sexual position, my dear? All of them. I don't know that I have a favorite. I don't know that You're I have exploring. a favorite. You're, you're still figuring it out. And isn't that great? We've been that great? 25 years and we're still figuring it out. It's amazing because you change as a couple. Your body changes. His body changes. And that's a beautiful thing. It's never static if you make it dynamic. It is so true. It's so true. And then just, again, you know, just staying healthy, staying connected, staying authentic and making intimacy a priority because that is oxytocin and that helps us keep our relationships healthy and strong and intimate. Yeah, you're right. You're the best. Oh my God. I love you. Thank you for so much for spending time with me today. You guys, Bella, where can people find you? I know you're at smartdatingacademy.com. We will put that in the show notes, but tell our audience where they can find you. Yeah. Sign up for a free newsletter at smartdatingacademy.com. You can fill out any contact form. And in January, I launched a podcast called the Smart Dating Academy podcast. Tons of interesting guests and people and dating tips, all things dating, all things relationships. So, and you can, you can subscribe on Spotify, iTunes, Apple, anywhere you get your podcast or follow me at, on Instagram. We post two tips twice a day at Smart Dating Academy. I love that. I know you've been growing like wildfire on Instagram. It's great to see you there. We've done some lives there too, you guys. So be sure to follow Bella Gandhi there and definitely follow me if you're not already. Thank Absolutely. you all for, thank you, Bella. Thanks for your time today. And thanks to all our listeners for being part of the Girlfriend Doctor community and sharing knowledge, being open to learn more. So I know you're going to have questions. Don't forget, you can send in your questions to our team. You can comment below our videos or on social media. 
and we will do our best to address them, if not right away in an upcoming live or video or podcast or blog. So be sure to stay on my newsletter at dranna.com. Check out the blogs and information that we have there and also listen to my podcast that was recorded over a year ago with Bella Gandhi as well. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you till next time.